Hello and welcome to another episode of the Electric Innovation. I'm Mats. This is a BYD T3. It's not a Terminator. Um, it's a small van. It's a it's a uh, a uh, competitor to the Nissan NV200 and and the the um, special partner and that sort. It's electric. Uh, and not entirely certain, certain the technical details, you will find them text down here. I've been driving now for an hour, and the first impressions are it's really a nice place to be. I mean, it's a, it's a car, it's a simple van, so it, it, it's not a luxury vehicle. Vans in Europe aren't, uh, they're always full of plastic and stuff. And this has no touch screen, it has, you know, it's sort of going 10 years back in time or so. Interior wise, and the buttons and the climate controls and the radio. But it, it all works and it's all there, except for the DAB radio and the Bluetooth. There isn't any. They will fix that in a little way. Because the people, the great people at Iris Abil, which lent me the car, they will install a tiny audio in the car, so you have your radio and your Bluetooth and all of that, very, very nice, very easy to use, and a good idea. Why there is no Bluetooth and DAB radio in a car in Europe and in Norway, I don't know. It's probably this Chinese car is partly built to Chinese customers and Chinese demands, and they are different than European ones, and different than American ones, and so on and so on. That's how things are. It's there's an all right little driving computer in the, between between the dials here. It's not very advanced, but uh, it works. And um, average consumption now over the last uh, 50 kilometers, because that's the only thing I managed to get it to show me, is 222 watt hours per kilometer, which is actually quite all right. I mean, this is a this is a van. Okay, it's a compact van, but it's still a van, and it's pouring. It's raining, wet, and seven degrees outside, and it's not very nice at all. In fact, I can't say that it is because it isn't. Um, and I mean, the Volvo I drove we used a lot more than that, and this is now we're going through some small. Now we're going through she, but we, we, we did. To get there, we did a lot of motorway. We're at 50% right now, that means I probably have to stop and charge before I get the car back again, and I would hope not to do that. Because it's supposed to be 250 kilometers. Um, but it is what it is. And. Uh, ah, that's rare. The rear suspension is quite harsh on this. Actually, could have been softer, but this is an unloaded car, mind you. So I would imagine it can do the 170 km run quite easily. Now I have pushed it quite hard, and it is capped to the 100 kilometers, and I abandoned it a little bit as a speed limiter. So I probably uh, once you get to know it, you can get the consumption down in the range up a little bit easy, much easier. So I probably drove it, I probably used a little bit too much energy getting here. So around town is very nice indeed. Double doors and uh, about hatch at the back, so it's, you know, just throw things in. They have put a metal plate on the floor and you have, uh, you have, um, Cargo hooks, so you can secure a cargo, that's quite important. Uh, the, the charging is CCS, and it's in the front, behind the bag. That's okay, you know, no thin job, nothing new there. It's quite peppy, up to around 80 kilometers, and then it sort of falls off. That, you know, sadly, the one thing, 
the biggest thing I miss here, yeah, it's actually cruise control. Because there, there is no cruise control in this car, you have to do all the driving yourself. And there's nothing wrong about that. I don't know how to drive a car, it's just you realize suddenly how much you don't drive a car in your daily life because you have your autopilot on the tail. The best time I have my simple cruise control in the uh, official partner I drive. But once you learn this thing, learn to drive this thing, I must say it is a nice place. I really like it. I mean, it's not, it's nothing spectacular. It's a van. You have your leather seats, you have your arm armrests. It's a very well list for my body. They're spaced just in the right height and stuff. They're not adjustable, so that's it is what it is. You have your power sockets down here. Your cup holders, several of them actually. Uh, three. Half two people, so you um, should be able to not argue about that. Lots of small cubby holes in the rooms and stuff, uh, and an ashtray. I haven't seen an ashtray in the car for kind of a decade, probably. So <laughs> that's it. That's uh, yeah. It's there if you want to. Is it noisy in there? That depends on what you want to compare. Pair it to, I guess. But not really. There, now we're done charging. Uh, we're at 27%. Actually, quite going quite well. Not that that charges relatively fast. Um, turned out after a little bit of fiddling. Because I've been really struggling with to get this thing to charge because I left all my charging the RFID chips in my Tesla. So I went back, picked them up, and then tried to see if, so if I can get this thing to work. Because getting it to work on an app was slightly difficult. And with the RFID chip, you work, you know, you work locally, so you don't have that app connection problem. Sometimes it can time out. Um, it turned out that this car just uses a bit of time with the handshake. It takes a bit longer than it normally does. So you just plug it in and you tell it to start charging and it will start. You just give, need to give it time. But it does work. There's nothing to worry about. I've, even though I was rather wor worried and slightly furious actually earlier. Uh, I will bring this to the attention of the dealers and uh, yeah because it is something you need to be aware of as a customer it's not dangerous it just can be slightly scary when you're standing there now in the rain and it's cold and you this thing doesn't start charging you don't know if the area is the car or the box or the whatever you know if you have an app, you don't even know there's so many sources of potential errors that you don't know where they are. And you do go slightly uh, like that. There we are then. Back at Arzabil. I'm gonna park this up. I'm gonna take the test I'm gonna go home and gonna have some food. Be safe, take care, take care of yourself and if you can take care of others. Like, comment, subscribe. Once again, a big thanks to Arzabil uh, for lending me the car. Yeah, see you in the next one. Take care. Bye bye.